The semi-finals, two close games, entertaining, heavy to unpack. They had you on the edge of your seat. Port Adelaide beating Hawthorne 75-72. to Huge credit to Port Adelaide. What a win. What a performance. They applied pressure. They made the Hawks defend, most importantly. And um, I thought they just had a, a few solid moments as a team. And they were all over the Hawks. Early on in this game, the Hawks looked stunned. They couldn't um, be the side that we saw against the Western Bulldogs in that elimination final. Now, despite the loss for the Hawks, what a season they had. It only feels like yesterday where they were nearing the bottom end of the ladder. But they've worked themselves back up the ladder. They finished seventh. They had a great run throughout finals. And most importantly, they've grown a culture which is unique in its own way, which is full of youth, full of energy. And it's a new brand of football that they're showing to our footy world. And I think, you know, when they're getting players like Tom Barras, Josh Battle, and they'll probably get a couple others heading into next season. This side is going to be absolutely brilliant to watch. They already are brilliant to watch. And in future years, you'd expect to see them in a grand final. All the best to the Hawks for future seasons, and what a year it was. A very promising year for the Hawthorne Football Club, and impressive. Now... Ken Hinckley, he gave it back to the Hawks after the game. Obviously, um, many of you would have seen that, um, whether it was after the game on the broadcast or social media, etc. You want my quick take? Because I know there's heaps of controversy out there. Got to put it behind us. Have to put it behind us. And looking at this situation, yes, Jack Ginevan got ahead of himself. And, it, you know, it, it got him back. And in life, I'm sure many of you would have heard this saying, if you're willing to dish it out, be willing to take it as well. And I think, Jack Ginevan, when you're going to get ahead of yourself like that and it's going to get you back in the backside, um, you have to cop it on the chin. You know, and, and not, I felt like the Hawks were a bit upset. And I know you've just lost and I know your season's come to an end, but you went in there with a big bravado, I have to say. Um... Ken Hinckley's situation as a coach, as an experienced coach, it wasn't the best look. It was extremely poor. Um, and if you wanted to give the Hawks a bit of a clip over the years, do it in your press conference. Say, I'm really proud of my boys to get the win. Uh, Hawks aren't flying now. That's all you got to say if you want to give them a little drive-by. Or, you know what, um, I, I guess they need a rain check on that, you know, uh, 14 days comment or something like that. Or just keep the trap shut and bring your boys back into the change rooms. Um, and you know what? And say to them, yes, we got the win, but there's still areas of improvement because it's going to get a lot tougher from here on out. And um, so it works both ways. Ginevan in the wrong, Hinkley in the wrong as well. Put it behind us. It's a bit of drama. It adds a bit of fuel to the fire. And I can't wait to see both of these sides next season because it's going to be a heated contest. And don't you love that in football? Jason Horn francis shout out to him. A few solid moments in this game. I thought he played brilliantly. Now, back to the Hinkley situation just quickly. James Sisley. Great to see him standing up for his teammates. As a captain, you want to see that. And Sam Mitchell, um, you know, was all praise for his captain in James Sisley after the game. But I have to say, in that moment, you've got Luke Bruce on your shoulders. A 300 gamer. And rather than appreciating the moment... And focusing on Luke Bruce, he kept bickering away with Ken Hinckley. He kept going, kept going. That Luke Bruce nearly fell off um, the shoulders of James Sisley, if you if you watch it closely. So James Sisley needs to be better. And I know you want to back up your teammates, but uh, it, it's an emotional game. That's where I'll leave it. It's an emotional game, and we definitely saw plenty of emotions on Friday night. And that's where I'll leave that. Because we've got to move on to the other semi-final. Uh, the Lions and the Giants. The Lions winning 105 to 100. The Giants led by 44 points. They completely stopped the Giants. And it was it was um, such a shame because they played some quality football, especially in the first half. Late in the third, the Lions started to get going. Adam Kingsley was absolutely fuming in the coach's box. He said after the game, we're not a premiership brand and we've got to continue to work towards that. I'm glad he acknowledged that. I'm glad he knows where they've got to improve. Um, and look, credit to the Giants because they've had a great year. And uh, a few players like Jesse Hogan, um, you know, Tom Green and a few others, they've been absolutely brilliant. 
And I'm really looking forward to see the Giants hopefully go a lot better in finals next year and in future. For the Lions, what a comeback. They believed and they conquered. They still had time. And it ain't over till it's over. I couldn't believe what I witnessed uh, on Saturday. That was absolutely sensational. To see a team keep going until the very end and pull off a great comeback. Well done to the Giants, uh, to the Lions, excuse me. Um, look, for Joe Danaher, four goals, uh, stepped up clutch, carried his team over the line. Now, um, no GMP of the semi-finals, uh, cause, you know, only two games and not much outstanding moments with a goal and mark. Um, but Joe Danaher, one of his goals was super clutch, uh, tight angle and he made it look so easy. So well done to big Joe Danaher. The prelims, uh, they're only going to get more entertaining. Uh, on Friday night, we've got the Swans and Port Adelaide. I've got the Swans by, it's a bizarre call, but I've got them by 50 points. Um, I know that these two sides met in round 21. I know Port Adelaide absolutely smashed them by 112 points. But I think the Swannies are going to really apply a lot of pressure. It's going to be an intense battle early on. And then I think the Swans can just string away uh, in the second half, or I'm hoping so at least. I know it's a wild call for a margin. Um, either way, I've got the Swans to win, uh, whether it be close or not. Now, the Cats take on the Lions on Saturday at 5.15. The Lions buy 10 points for me to win in a thriller. I know their MCG, MCG voodoo, you could say, can linger around. Linger around in the back of their minds, maybe. Inaccuracy cost uh, the Lions last time these two sides met earlier this year in April. But I think they'll be better this time round. Um, what we saw in that fourth quarter against the Giants was absolutely extraordinary. And I think if they can play that um, see ball, get ball, push it forward game, um, they can really find a way through to crack through this um you know, experienced, tough Cats outfit. And, um, yeah, I've got the Lions to cause a bit of an upset, you could say. So that'll lead to what's been my grand final prediction for a very long time now this season uh, with the Swans and Lions in the grand final. I hope that's the case. And we'll be back next week to unpack it all. Enjoy the football um, and drop your predictions down below. And as always, you got to love it. If you like that recap, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below your thoughts on the previous round. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel. And for more of my content, make sure to follow my Facebook page and also my Instagram page. Plenty of more sports updates on there.